let's see if we can dive back into the sanctification. How we walk. How we move progressively to spiritual maturity. And the closer we get to spiritual maturity, the, the more we look like Christ. When I say look, I don't mean physical attraction. I mean in character, in behavior, in emotion, in obedience, just like Christ. So, again, we are talking about sanctification, how we maneuver ourselves through sanctification. And uh, we've come all the way down from, uh, down to, um, how we walk, a worthy walk, a love walk, a light walk, a wisdom walk, and now we are up to a spiritual field walk. What does that look like? Let's pray first. Father, we thank you and we love you. We thank you for the Spirit, and we thank you that it is something that we must do, and that's be filled with the Holy Spirit. Father, help us to understand, help us to come to the reality, to be able to answer the question any time, are we filled or are we not filled? Is the Spirit in control or am I in control? So, Father, I just pray, oh God, that you would clarify these things. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. A spirit for your walk. Hmm. I guess when people say, I'm looking for a spirit for your church, uh, I think they're looking for uh, the character of uh, people that's obeying God, not some emotional experience, but some truth experience, experiencing the truth, a spirit feel walk. We were coming to last week, and... and um, I took a detour just for a minute because I wanted to make sure that we understood that this whole thing of being about filled with the Spirit, wow, to help our sanctification um, was a big deal, and we need to keep it a big deal. Um, uh, we talk about the things that uh, was done at the point of our salvation. Uh, these things were supernatural. And we named five things that were done at the point of, of uh, being saved, being regenerated, being justified. We were right there, and we said five things. Number one is regeneration. Something happened to you on the inside, supernatural. Uh, regeneration. In uh, Titus chapter 3, verse 5, he says, He saved us, not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was involved, and I want to move to say he caused our regeneration. But then there was baptism. The second thing that we found, and these are not in any order, he says that um, in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, 13, for by one Spirit... We were all baptized into one body, whether Greek, whether Jew or Greek, or whether slave or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So, spirit, so the spirit not only regenerated us, the spirit baptized us on the inside, and we were sealed. In Ephesians chapter um, 4, verse 13, 
It says, In him you also have to listen to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. And then Romans 8 9, regenerated, baptized, sealed, but also indwelt. Romans 8 9 says, However, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. So the Spirit dwells in us. So let's look at that. So at the point of your salvation, you receive the Holy Spirit. And he regenerated you, he baptized you, he sealed you, and he indwelt you. He lives there. He does never leave you. He's there. So let's look at our main verse in Ephesians 5.18. Being filled. Being filled is repeated again and again and again. And if you use the term spirit control in my life, then that is being filled, being filled. So you can be unfilled where the Spirit is not controlling your life, and you can be filled where the Spirit is controlling your life. And this is why we um, dial in um, Romans 1-9. In Romans 1-9, Romans, wow. Um the the first uh, John one nine we talk about confessing our sins and he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Uh because we're talking about field and being refilled and refilled. Every time we get unfilled we need to be refilled. The spirit need to get back in control of our life. So, First uh, John 1, 9 helps us to get back in fellowship. You see, we don't lose our salvation. We don't lose the Spirit. We just make Him our slave instead of us being His slave. Well, He's no longer producing the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the meekness, the self-control, the fruit of the Spirit, because he's not in control of our lives. But that's because we have allowed some sin to slip in somewhere. Now, so you don't get lost. We said the Holy Spirit, upon your salvation, regenerates you, baptizes you, seals you, and indwells you, and he fills you. Those First four will never be repeated. You'll never be regenerated again. You'll never be baptized again. You'll never be sealed again. And you'll never be indwelled again because all those are permanent things that the Holy Spirit does for us and in us. But I'm really talking about a spiritual walk. How do I keep the Spirit feel in me that he's in control and by the way only as the Holy Spirit teaches us can we grow so there are a lot of reasons to be filled with the Holy Spirit meaning the Holy Spirit in control because he's the one that explained the scriptures he's the truth teacher he remains in us when Jesus told his disciples, he said, The Holy Spirit has been with you, but he shall be in you. And that is forever. So let's see how we can stay feared feel. So uh, what we do when we sin, we quench the Holy Spirit. And because we quench him, then he's grieved. He's grieved. 
And since I'm right here at Ephesians, let's look at him being grieved in verse 30. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. How do we grieve him? It's when we sin. What kind of sin? Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, slander. Be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender heart, and forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. When you choose not to forgive, you quench the Holy Spirit. You, 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 you make him inoperable in your life. And so that's why I'm saying for us to be uh, productive and on fire for God, it's because we are, we've learned how to immediately get back filled with the Spirit when we're no longer filled with the Spirit. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say that I know that uh, lying is a sin. been taught that all my life. But I don't know that gossiping is a sin. So I've been doing a whole lot of gossiping. But the moment I lie, then now something comes to my mind saying, you just sinned. You, you, the spirit, if, if you don't confess it, you don't get back feel. And let's just say, I confessed a line. I didn't know about the gossip. But the moment I confess, confess the line, then he forgives me of the line and of the gossip. And that's why that last little phrase in 1 John 1, 9 says, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's because we have confessed, done what was necessary. We've said, God, we agree with you. We, we've sinned. Forgive us. But as you grow in Christ, you grow in knowledge uh, to where now your conscience can be more informed so that when sin shows up, you can avoid it. You can see it quickly and you can turn from it and get back in fellowship because that's what it's going to take you getting back in fellowship. And when you get back in fellowship, your love shows back up. Your joy shows back up. Your peace shows back up simply because I'm back in fellowship with God. Beloved, I want to encourage you, encourage you to stay filled with the Spirit, that you may live a Spirit-filled life, that you may walk a Spirit-filled uh, walk, a worthy walk, a love walk, a wisdom walk, a, uh, a spirit fear walk and we're going to finally get to a spiritual warfare walk but right now we're learning how to deal with the spirit in our day to day life let's pray Father we thank you we love you thank you for you providing everything and thank you that we are born again thank you that we are learning how to walk in the Spirit, to stay Spirit-filled, to stay filled with the Word so we can stay filled with the Spirit. So, Father, we love you and we praise you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.